Welcome everyone, Captain Zikrik here. I've been absolutely loving Starfield, but it turns out there is a ton of shit in space, and so a huge chunk of my time so far has been spent figuring out what is worth looting and why. In this video, I'll share with you everything I've learned so far to understand and make sense of the loot system. We'll categorize the different types of loot to understand them better, discuss what they are used for and why we need them, then quickly cover the best places to find that loot. I'll show clips of me raiding a star station to provide examples of the different types of loot you should be looking for as you clear various locations throughout the game. The rest of my time has been spent figuring out how to store all this loot and carry it across the galaxy, so if you find this guide valuable, stay tuned for my storage guide in an upcoming video. If you have any additional info on the loot that I don't cover here, we would all love to see that in the comments. Alright, let's dive in. The very first thing I want to mention is how much and well this game rewards exploration, specifically in terms of bonus loot. If you like to check every nook and cranny of the abandoned mech lab like me before you head back to your ship, you will certainly be rewarded for your additional effort by finding all sorts of extra cool shit compared to someone who is not spending the extra time to look around. This adds a really interesting element to the game where you are not only encouraged to explore space at the grandest scale, but also at the smallest scale. Checking what's inside the locker in the corner of the bathroom can be just as impactful as a planetary discovery. I've spent a huge amount of my time in game so far looking around, trying to determine where to find stuff and what is worth grabbing, and that is the purpose of this video. Through this process, I've narrowed down the different types of loot in Starfield to five general categories so we can all understand and process it better. These categories are gear, consumables, collectibles, contraband, and resources. Let's start with gear. This obviously consists of the items you can equip or wear, but something that may not be obvious is that different types of gear don't affect the rarity or item level, just the type of attribute it has. In Starfield, there are basically two types of gear, weapons and armor. Weapons consist of both melee weapons as well as a huge variety of guns. Guns vary based on their form factor, such as rifle, pistol, or shotgun, or their damage type, ballistic, energy, or EM, which is basically the non-lethal stun damage. In Starfield, armor is essentially each piece of your spacesuit that contributes to your protection, both from the environment and enemy weapon damage. This consists of your suit, helmet, pack, and apparel. These top values represent armor protecting against the different types of weapon damage, and these lower values represent resistances to different environmental factors. You'll notice that different types of gear have varying amounts of armor and resistances, so you can look for a balance that fits your playstyle, depending on what you like to do in the game. You can also eventually build towards different sets of gear for different types of activities, such as a melee combat set, a ranged combat set, and a planetary exploration set. Now let's talk about rarity. Rarity also does not affect the base damage or armor value of the gear. It simply adds perks to boost what is already there. Rarity simply determines the amount of bonus perks the gear has. Blue has one perk, purple has two perks, and gold has three perks. Perks are essentially extra bonuses to the gear that you can't get any other way. The value of the base attributes on gear, which you can think of essentially as the item level, are determined by the prefix. You'll notice that once you start to progress through the game, you'll begin to acquire calibrated versions of the same gear you already have. These are basically upgraded versions of that same type of attribute split with higher base damage, armor, or resistances. I'm sure there are additional levels of these upgrades above calibrated with different names that I haven't acquired yet, but if you've played a game like Diablo 4, this is basically the equivalent to items being sacred or ancestral. You'll notice that new types of gear that drop as you progress deeper into the game will have a naturally higher base value of total stats. Finally, gear can be modded by attachments. These can roll inherently on items, but can always be changed or added by crafting at a workbench. A weapon with a single or a few mods attached will be designated as modified in the title. Note that weapons with a semi-automatic mod will always show higher damage that is adjusted up because of the lower fire rate and armor piercing rounds up the damage number slightly. There also appears to be different combinations of mods that will change this prefix to something like assassins or explorers or scouts based on the combo. Mods can do all sorts of things like adjust accuracy, range, power, round type, and clip size. So to summarize for gear, base item level is determined by the prefix, the first of which is called calibrated. Rarity simply determines the amount of extra perks, and this is the only way you can get these perks. And mods vary the gear in different ways that can always be changed, removed, or added at a workbench. Be careful not to confuse the prefix supplied by the mod with the prefix that determines the item level. I've seen mod prefixes show up as modified, assassins, scouts, or explorers so far based on the mod combo, 
and the only prefix I've seen that determines item level so far is calibrated, and there are surely more tiers above this as we get deeper into the game. The way you can tell if it's an item level prefix is if the base weapon damage or base armor value is higher than the previous version of that type of gear. The primary way to acquire gear is by looting enemies after combat. Most human enemies will be holding a weapon, a couple pieces of armor, and maybe some creds or consumables. Gear can also be found scattered throughout locations in chests which you'll find on the ground with these green dots. Weapons can also be found on racks mounted on the walls, and weapon cases you have to open on tables or desks, and armor can additionally be found in closed display cases or showcased on mannequins, all of which can be looted. The next type of loot are consumables. Consumables consist of ammo, throwables, and aid. Ammo is pretty self-explanatory and is required to fire the various types of weapons we just discussed. There are a vast amount of ammo types in this game, and so it's worth paying attention to which ammo your favorite guns use. If you're playing on a higher difficulty where enemies have more health, you may be using more ammo than you naturally find on your travels, so it could be worth stocking up on specific ammo types at vendors when you're in town. Also, ammo has no mass, so it's one of the few things that doesn't affect your carrying capacity. Thank God. The only throwables I've found so far are different types of grenades and landmines. Again, pretty self-explanatory, throw or place them to blow stuff up. Just like gear, both ammo and throwables can be found on enemy bodies, in chests, or just lying around. You'll find that these smaller loot boxes on tables and such often contain ammo or throwables. Aid is the third type of consumable and is a large category that includes food, drugs, med packs, and ship parts. Food and drink can be used for small amounts of healing and can be very useful for these little buffs that come along with it. These do all sorts of cool stuff like boost your oxygen, carrying capacity, and persuasion. It seems like you can stack these effects together and I'm actually not sure if there's a cap to this. Just kidding, I tested it and it seems like you can basically stack one of each kind of buff, so eating two things with the same buff won't stack, but multiple different types of buffs will. Next is pharmaceuticals or drugs. These are similar to food, except instead of restoring health, they give powerful short-term bonus effects, such as significantly boosting melee damage or increasing damage resistance. These are generally more combat-focused consumables, but there are also some that do things like boost persuasion or research. Certain types of drugs can also cause addictions over time, which will be negative effects that can only be cured with more drugs. <laughs> or I guess technically more pharmaceuticals, such as detox kits. Note that just like weapons, these can be bound to your quick menu if you want to use them during combat without opening your inventory. There are also a bunch of different kinds of healing pharmaceuticals that are used to specifically treat different afflictions or injuries. Keep in mind that certain recipes for crafting and researching both food and pharmaceuticals sometimes require specific items from that category. For example, some food recipes may require bread or cheese, and to make infused bandages you'll need regular bandages. For this reason, it's a good idea to keep some raw food and pharma materials on hand for crafting or researching purposes. Basically for food, I try to keep the raw stuff and then eat the cooked meals and chunks cubes. Things like loaves of bread, butter, and meat are often used in the recipes themselves and so are worth holding on to rather than eating as is. I guess med packs are technically pharmaceuticals, but I like to give them their own category because they will be your main source of healing during combat, basically like health potions. There will be higher tier med packs as you progress through the game, such as the trauma packs that come next, but these will be critical for your journey through the starfield. Finally, we have ship parts, which are basically like med packs for your ship. You'll use these to repair your hull mid-combat in space. If you're playing on a harder difficulty, you'll find that you can churn through med packs and ship parts fairly quickly, especially at the beginning. So these are the main supplies I find myself buying at vendors when I'm in town, along with some specific types of ammo I mentioned earlier. Keep in mind that both med packs and ship parts regen quickly over time, it's not an instant heal. So generally you'll want to use them early and often when taking damage instead of waiting until you're already low. Just like gear, ammo, and throwables, you'll mainly find these scattered throughout different locations you are clearing, either from looting enemies, in chests, or just laying around. Food and drink more than anything will often be found just individually sitting around, especially in kitchen areas. Keep an eye out for the green medical supply cases on walls which will often contain med packs, and ship parts are usually found from destroying enemy ships or from other debris in space. Locations on planets and moons designated as ship debris or crashes will usually have some amount of ship parts to be found somewhere within the crash area. The third category of loot is collectibles, and while it seems like these could be written off, they actually contain the most important type of loot in the game. Collectibles include notes, which are mainly related to lore and quests, as well as miscellaneous, which includes everything else that doesn't have a specific utility purpose in the game. 
Notes consist of books, which are generally for lore purposes and can be sold or collected. Data slates, which are basically where you will find most quest related stuff. And most importantly, skill texts. Skill texts are arguably the most important type of loot in the game, as these will give you permanent passive stat increases to your character for the rest of that playthrough. These are pretty rare and easy to miss, so keep an eye out for these magazines and papers on desks and tables, in lockers, etc. I've found most of mine so far by fully exploring the extra rooms and areas that are a little out of the way during the main quest lines. Miscellaneous items can generally be thought of as decoration. If you see anything throughout the world you want to have in your ship, home, or outpost, you can grab it, take it to where you want, drop it, then hold the interact button and move it to place it where you want. There are certain misc items with low mass and high value that are definitely worth grabbing just a vendor. These are generally antiques from old earth, such as flip lighters or cassette tapes, but also include sculptures and the like. It's really just about considering the mass to value ratio and if it's worth hauling back to a vendor. There's going to be an absolute shitload of miscellaneous items laying around everywhere that are really not worth the time to loot or mass required to carry them back to a vendor, and so this is the stuff you're going to have to sort through to find the goodies. Don't forget you can always use your flashlight to make it easier to look around and can also toggle your hand scanner to highlight items and other things you want to interact with. The main utility item you'll actually use under miscellaneous are digipicks, which are required to lockpick anything, and some locks may require multiple if you fuck up. I haven't had a huge focus on lockpicking personally because I'm already overwhelmed with the vast amount of loot available before breaking into stuff, but I'm starting to level it now and there's definitely some real value to leveling that skill early if you like these little lockpicking puzzles and enjoy extra loot. Again, just like everything else we've discussed so far, you'll find most all collectibles are scattered randomly throughout different locations. The final item that is technically categorized under MISC but really deserves its own category is contraband. These are high value illegal items that sell for massive amounts of credits, but only to vendors dealing in that kind of trade. These items are designated by a yellow box at the bottom right corner of the tooltip shown here. When you enter the orbit of a planet controlled by a governed system, your ship will be automatically scanned for contraband before you're allowed to enter the atmosphere, making it particularly dicey to just carry them around. In these situations, you'll either be forced to pay a fine and surrender the contraband, or fight the patrols, which will likely result in a bounty on your head. I found a chest location at the Lopez farm in the close unsettled system of Arane, where I would go stash my contraband until I could build an outpost out of the settled systems. My contraband remained safely in the chest at the Lopez farm, and I think you could probably do this in any location out of the settled systems, but Lopez owed me. Do keep in mind that if you decide to stash yours in the same place at the Lopez farm, you must grab it before completing the final part of the quest because his farm resets into a normal location after that, which I learned the hard way. I'm honestly not sure if other locations reset like this, but I don't think they do. I think once something is explored, it stays explored. So look for a good chest early in an unsettled system to stash your contraband until you can build your own outpost and put it in a chest there. Until you can find a place to sell it, of course. Contraband is often found in big locations with a lot of bad guys, often hidden in the secret safe or vault way in the back or underground, so it's always worth an extra look around. You can sometimes find clues to where stuff is hidden on data slates or computer terminals. Okay, moving on to the final category of loot, also probably the largest and most confusing, and that is resources. Resources are required for any type of building, upgrading, or researching in the game. This category can basically be split into three types of resources. Inorganic raw resources, manufactured components, and scavenged resources. Inorganic raw resources are the different types of solid, liquid, and gas materials that you can find on planets or moons. These are what you will see if you scan a planet. You'll need to increase your scanning skill for higher tier resources to show up on scans. Many of the metals can be found and mined individually with your laser cutter on the surface, but much of the gas and liquid will require an outpost with extractors to be built. If outposts are confusing to you at first like they were for me, stay tuned for my outpost guide, which is what I am working on figuring out in-game at the moment. My best piece of advice right now is to look for a spot with two or more patches of ground that contain the resources you need to extract when deciding where to build your early outposts. These inorganic raw resources can also be occasionally found throughout locations or from enemy ships, but the best way to acquire them in bulk is to find planets that contain them and then extract them using an outpost or roaming around mining with your laser cutter. You'll find that different types of these resources are often the main components required for building, crafting, and researching. 
That brings us to the next type of resource, which is the only one that could be crafted, and these are manufactured components. Manufactured components can be created in an industrial workbench, with only common and uncommon tiers being available at first. The special project skill will be required to craft rare, exotic, and unique manufactured components. But luckily, many of these can be found when roaming around and looting the various locations throughout the game. If you can't craft these yet, the best way to find them is by looking for locations related to them. For example, a mech lab will likely have more mechanical type components versus a mine, which will likely have more industrial type components versus a pharmaceutical lab, which will likely have more medical type components. In general, I haven't had to go out of my way to find these yet since I just loot what is available in the areas I'm clearing anyways as I progress throughout the story. This brings us to the final category of resource, which are scavenged resources. These ones I have gone a bit out of my way to farm because of how critical some of them are to building outposts and specifically storage containers. These will be used in all types of research, crafting, and building, and as the name suggests, are mainly found through scavenging. Identifying the flora and fauna of different planets and moons are the most reliable way to collect these resources. For example, the Laga plant which grows right near my first outpost on Omega Prime 1 provides structural stocks, which are what I need to build additional storage chests. Besides acquiring them from flora and fauna on different planets and moons, scavenged resources can also randomly be found lying around different locations similar to manufactured components. This is where I've received the majority of mine so far, and I've only had to go out of my way to farm specific ones I needed extra of, like the structural one for chests. The final type of loot in the game that gets its own bonus category are ships. Ships can be earned, purchased, or commandeered. I've purchased the Econo Hall ship with credits from the spaceport. I have a spacer ship that I accidentally disabled the engine while fighting close to it, which gave me the option to dock and board. Then I massacred everyone inside and flew it back to port. I've also seen an ecliptic ship land and raid a facility, and I snuck in behind them onto their ship, blasted everyone in there so they couldn't escape, cleared the ground squad, looted everything, then flew it all back to New Atlantis. When you acquire a ship this way, you'll have to pay a registration fee to be able to add or modify parts at the spaceport. Ships also have their own upgrade parts that can be purchased at spaceports, but it seems these exist as part of the ship itself and not as extra items in your inventory or storage. You can also sell ships for large amounts of credits. Ships themselves are a critical factor in hauling all this freshly acquired loot across the starfield, but that will be covered in my upcoming video discussing storage methods. All right, that's it for this one. I hope it was valuable. I hope it made sense. My goal is to help you explore the star field unencumbered by the burdens of too much loot, as I have been over encumbered for the majority of my journey so far. <laughs> my name's Zick, and I really like making builds and guides for RPGs. Starfield's been fucking dope so far, and so I'm probably going to play a bunch more of that. Also, casually playing Baldur's Gate, but looking to do some build guides for that as I move into Endgame. And Diablo 4 is kind of on the back burner for me as I wait for new shit to happen there. I haven't streamed much lately, but you can occasionally find me live on Twitch at Zikrik with a zero. Um, we have yeah, besides that, thanks for watching. Hope it was useful. And uh, good luck exploring the Starfield. <laughs> Take care of yourself, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.